It is finally opening week. Matt and I are here to talk about it. One of the best weeks of the year. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Let us know in the comments section. What are you most excited about as the Cubs open the season this week? Today's episode is presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Welcome to game week. We have so much planned here on the show this week. Excited to set the rotation today's episode update the roster uh do some win total things again this week preview cubs rangers on thursday real baseball and a live listener event at 7 p.m central tuesday that's this tuesday 7 p.m central we call sound off here on lockdown cubs and you could be on in fact that's the point of the show uh and if you want to be on send an email to L-O-C, soundoff at gmail.com. L-O-C, soundoff at gmail.com. You do that. I'll hit you back with the link and a time slot for uh, you when we record on Tuesday. That always takes a little bit of production work. I am excited and happy to do it. Um, I will be doing that Monday and Tuesday. L-O-C, soundoff at gmail.com. Sam, welcome to Game Week. Yeah, um, you know, game week, one of the best weeks of the year. Uh, It really is. You know, it's almost like, you know, despite, despite, you know, people having personal relationships, family, um, wives, husbands, sisters, brothers, Thursday night is your sixth, hopefully seventh month beginning of adding a new companion to your life, Mm. which is the Chicago Cubs baseball. And uh, Tuesday night, I'd like to see a lot of people. And even if you don't want to come on the show, join us on YouTube, 7 Central Time. I want to have a lot of listeners. Let's let's have a nice powwow and talk about this baseball team and your expectations, your concerns. You know, what do you think? 88 wins, 87, 96, 58, who knows? Oh, gosh. No, I'm kidding around. But it's going to be great, and um, I'm excited, Matt. And, you know, just bet- a lot, lots going on for me in the sporting round. There is. Yeah, let's uh, – we'll keep keeping track of that this week. Cause, yeah, for uh, Unlocked. The Illini Unlocked. Basketball team. Let me make one quick announcement before yeah. you get going. I know, I know, I know I'm going long here because people have already asked me. No matter what happens Thursday night, I will be doing a show after the Cubs game. Um, The Cubs are my priority. Um, I just apologize for my lack of focus if we are recording in the middle of a Sweet 16 tilt because that hasn't happened since 2005. But the Cubs will be my priority. I will be watching every pitch. I will have eyes everywhere. And I will be. I've got a lot of messages. There's no way you can record during the Sweet 16. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Because this is my life. Um, I take this seriously. I love what we do. And, um, you know, Thursday night, like I tweeted, I might have to have some sort of tranquil uh, uh, thing to get me uh, get me through the night. Justin Steele is going to start that game, and he's okay because he got hit with a comebacker during his start on Friday. He immediately exited the game, but the left knee contusion is already healed, and he will be set to make his opening day start on Thursday against the Rangers. Only concern here will be pitch count since the last start of spring training is the final tune-up, usually in that 75 to 90 pitch range. And he only pitched one inning Friday before getting hit. So he might still be in that 60 to 75 bracket if he's not adequately built up. Although my guess is that 
Monday or Tuesday, he'll have a side session. Uh, but really anything beyond 75 pitches might be a surprise. But, Sam, this is huge. That steal will be leading off the 2024 campaign. I know after it happened Friday, there was a moment in time where we started thinking about, well, who would make that start? When would steal return? But he's going to be okay, and he's going to be on the mound Thursday. Yeah, and I have a question for you, Matthew F. Uh, do you think? Do you think that uh-huh. if Steele didn't take that that comebacker to the mound, do you think that he would be pitch throw ninety pitches anyway? Game one. It's usually somewhere in the eighties. Yeah, I, I just think that this year. It, there, there's a lot riding on him because of the, you know, some uncertainty and health of other people. I, I was expecting like a five inning outing anyway, opening day, despite the score. And then remember you have that built in day off on Friday. So you could be pretty aggressive with the bullpen. So I don't really, I guess the That's point true. I'm trying, I guess the point I'm trying to make is, is I'm just glad he's throwing opening day. And I understand that he's probably not going to throw a ton of pitches. It is what it is. Um, but I'm just glad he's out there. And I expect, you know, I expect opening day, you're probably going to see some sort of combination of, of uh, El Monte, Lighter, hmm. um, and then, you know, you know, Naris, Merriweather, Ozla. You know, you're going to see all the big boys uh, uh, on, on Thursday night, assuming hopefully we're pitching with a lead. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, Steele might only need to pitch five innings um, yeah. or maybe even less given the Friday, Friday off day into Saturday, Sunday conclusion of that of that series that that is good to to put together I, I do wonder what uh, the bullpen ladder is going to be and uh, Craig Council has been just a master at that in his career uh, in the manager seat so let's see what he does with that on on the north side uh, Sunday the rotation was officially announced at least that first time through it's going to be Steele Hendricks Wicks Imanaga opening at Wrigley the home opener, which is a little bit of a choice. We'll get into that. And Assad, the fifth game. Jamison Tyone is projected to return in mid-April, so perhaps the fourth or fifth series of the year when the Cubs are in uh, San Diego against the Fathers and and Seattle uh, against the Mariners. But that's the way it's going to line up, Sam. What are your thoughts on that five in that order? Well, I kind of hinted at it uh, the last time we talked about it. It was kind of a tough landing spot to start with Texas and the Dodgers back to back for 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 Imanaga, you know. Yeah. Um. And and somebody made a decent point to me today. They're like, "Well, isn't it actually more of a high pressure game to pitch the home opener than it is in Texas?" Yeah, it's more high pressure, but it's also tactically a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Uh. You know, you've talked about it though too. It will be interesting. You know, and you know me. This I go above and beyond. I overthink these things. So like, but but like, interested to see how he looks in the cold. You know, right? Th- that there. Would you agree that it's probably a ninety-nine percent chance that'll be the coldest game he's ever pitched in? I think so. So that'll be interesting. But I just think you don't want to start a new guy coming in overseas against the defending champs and then the Dodgers lineup. So I'm okay with this. Okay. And I think Council. I think it says a lot about his trust in Wicks. I think he feels like Wicks yeah. can go out there Whoa. and compete on Sunday. Um, there also could be just a. A, a planning part of it where he just wants, he likes him and on Monday. And then that works out looking ahead. And, and I'm really right. not trying to knock David Ross, but like, I just know counsel so much smarter than me that I really early on, I'm just going to let him do what he does and, and kind of observe. And so this, this, th- again, this makes sense to me, not starting Drew Smiley makes sense to me. There's yes. a lot of things that we did early last year that didn't make sense. And so I'm looking forward to it. I wish Tyone wasn't starting the year in the IL because I bet you he might have gotten that second start. And I think you're right. right. I think then it would have been Hendricks doing the home opener uh, mm-hmm. against Colorado and then maybe Imanaga following him. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's all right. I, I'm not thrilled. Like, it's not like overly awesome. Our first three games are going up against the defending champs and Hendricks and Wicks, two and three, but. They don't have great pitchers either. What, what are they going to do? Ivaldi, Gray, you said, and and Heaney, Heaney probably. Yeah. yeah. So those are those will all be three coin flip games. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get two of them. Yeah, they got a heck of a heck of a batting order though. Um, so I'm really curious because I've I've been looking at the season really in the first nine game frame before the Cubs go out west, and so I am wondering the ninth game, 
would that be Assad or Imanaga? Like, does Imanaga not start at Wrigley twice and then lead off the Padres series game 10? Right. I'm already thinking about that kind of thing. Sure. Um, you know, yes, it you does should. say a lot about Wicks should and really thinking. Assad. And you know what? Fine. They, they, I wouldn't, I would go as far as to say that they saved the rotation in August and September last year. A major reason why the Cubs were even still in contention down the stretch. Okay, Wicks against the Rangers and Dodgers. Let let's go. Let let's see what happens with with his array of pitches. Um, Assad against the Rockies. That anybody against the Rockies should be should be favorable. Um, yeah, so the no, Cubs really have a, an opportunity, especially the first six games, just because the Rockies are so horrible. Uh, um, but really these first nine, I think they could get off to a really nice start before they get on the plane again and go West. Yeah. I think, I think just managing it, you know, I'm not, you know, the Dodgers are the Rangers and Dodgers are tough, man. I mean, and, and unfortunately two of the best teams in the league and unfortunately Corey Seager looks like he's going to be good to go. Um, oh, he made no. he made his debut yesterday, and and same then with Josh Young and Josh Young. Yeah, he made his debut. So you're going to get them in full strength. Tough to ask, a tough ask to go in there to win two out of three. They absolutely could. It really is. And I, then you got yeah. you know the all star the all star team and you know with with a major investigation and deferrals right. coming into town. Right. Um, you know maybe we'll talk about that on an off day, but uh, yeah. You know, it's tough. I, I think I think just kind of managing that. And then, you know, and we're going to do a schedule episode tomorrow or, or Tuesday, sometime during yeah. the week. Yeah. So I don't want to get too involved, but, you know, it, it's a tough schedule. So I'm not as concerned about a great start as just get your feet under you. Nobody's going to run away with this division, um, you know, and start to get a nice rhythm and, and win the games you're supposed to win and and close out games you know if we have a 3-1 three, 3 run lead opening day in the 7th that's a game now it becomes important to win right you got to win that uh we will do a schedule episode for Tuesday and i am leading towards being on the more conservative side this first 30 games or so much less you know these first couple series against two of the best teams in the whole sport uh coming up next there is a lot of roster updates there's movement there's health uh statuses to be updated and we're going to do that coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick Who's going to win it all? Cubs are still at 83 and a half on FanDuel over under. And is there a line yet, Sam, for Illinois and Iowa State, Sweet 16? Iowa State, uh, I believe they're the Cyclones, opened up at minus two and a half against the Fighting Illini. Since January 1st, you will see the, the best offense, the number one rated offense in the country in Illinois against the number one rated defense uh, from Ohio State. Iowa State, minus two and a half. Yeah, let's keep the local flavor going in this tournament. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're back here on Locked On Cubs. Dom Smith and Carl Edwards were told they weren't going to make the team, and they have elected to use their opt-out that are no longer, at least right now, with the Cubs organization. Uh, there's a very outside chance they could return and report to Des Moines. Garrett Cooper was told he's making the team, so he will be a right-handed hitting option at first or DH against left-handers. And based on who is remaining in camp, it is down to Nick Madrigal or Alexander Canario for the last position spot as Madrigal returned on Sunday. David Peralta is going to remain in Arizona when everyone departs this week and will get at bats and build up his throwing program in extended spring training. So if Magical is ready, I think he's going to be on. Uh, but Canario is in camp as of Sunday's recording time here. On the pitching side, it's two guys still in camp for the last bullpen spot. One seems way more likely than the other, but they're still in camp, so we're going to play the game. Uh, and that's Luke Little and hated Wisniewski. 
thoughts on the roster, Cooper making it, Edwards out, Smith out, and these last couple spots that still need to be determined. Yeah, a lot there. And I have a little headache this Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Um, so I would say let, let's go with not surprised at all with Dom Smith. Um, just didn't really see the fit there. Um, pretty surprised at Carl Edwards. I thought he had a chance to make this team. But again, I get very confused with the 40-man stuff. I, I don't think it was, hey, we don't think Carl Edwards is good enough. It's like, hey, we don't think Carl Edwards is worth the 40-man spot and, and, and giving giving up him. Um, with Madrigal, oh, Cooper, not surprised at all. Uh, Makes glad sense he's on, wisdom out. Yeah, glad he's on this team, and he's got a little bit of the runway here without wisdom to go prove something, to go yes. hit. Yeah. You know, his job is to hit. To stick around for a while. Yeah, and his job, like, like when we face Heaney, you know, and, and I'll look at this for the schedule episode tomorrow, how many lefties we have in the first 15 days of the campaign. Okay. But when, when we face Heaney on Sunday, his job is to hit. Yeah. Get on base, hit, do some things. Um, the little Wisniewski thing, you know. It shouldn't really be a choice, right? Well, it's not even about that. I just, I, I. I don't like doing this because I get labeled as a as, as a hater. Hmm. I, you know, I don't. First of all, everyone. Call, I like Javier Assad. I just don't think he was as good as his numbers were last year. I could be happier that the guy's starting instead of Drew Smiley. Well, when I got that news, I went out. I went out on my balcony for the first time since I moved in. Uh, I just don't see it right now with Wisniewski. No, like he he was he was brutal for most parts of last season. He's right. been brutal in the spring training. It just seems like a guy that needs seasoning at the minor league level and a lot of it. Yeah, and maybe uh, he goes to the minor league level and he is a reliever. But practice there. Don't practice here where it counts. Yeah, and and then the other thing I'll say is that... Now he's gotten torpedoed this spring. Torpedoed. Um, no, no, torpedoed. And uh, Luke Little is a surprise just because he's a prospect. Right. You know, prospects out of camp is, is still rare in this sport, but good for him. Yeah. And I just think, you know, Ben Brown, you know, has showed some things. Oh, my gosh. You know, so I think the Cubs are in good shape. I think the I say this all the time whenever you do this, and I'm, I'm sure you and all of our fantastic listeners are sick of hearing it. But the opening day roster actually isn't as important as you think it is because it's going to look right. really different. So it's like if Wisniewski will come down – He'll be back up. Uh, ben Brown is going to play a role this season. I, I find it a little weird, like how little of Cade Horton we've heard about this spring. Yeah, they decided to keep him on the minor league side. Yeah, and like I just, you know, I'd like to see him. You know, his his first couple starts in the minor leagues will be as must see as anything that the Cubs do because he could play right. a huge role. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot yeah. of depth. We talked about that as our as our strength. So. You know, I'd like to see Little make it. I don't think the Cubs, you know, wouldn't would he be he, Smiley isn't really a lefty because he doesn't get out lefties. And Lighter is a lefty. And Lighter kind of is a lefty, but it'd be nice to have a true left-handed pitcher yeah. that gets out lefties, um, you know, that has high upside. So I I'm rooting for Little there. One more piece of news on the roster. Ian Happ is supposed to play on Monday. He's been out for a few days again and may. Uh, because of the hamstring issue is still lingering. My guess would be, Sam, that uh, c Council said opening day is in jeopardy, but I think his left field status yeah. is. Agreed. So I think he's only going to be available to DH the first couple of series, and we're going to see Talkman and left. Yeah, I don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know about series, but it feels like at least the first few games. Yeah. And which which means which means you're going to get a steady dose of Morel at third if that's the definitely case. Definitely the first three games. Yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna get a steady a steady dose of Morel then. Correct. You don't want to mess with a soft tissue. No, especially when you go back to Wrigley and it's 37 degrees. And the IL's backdated to to today to Monday. Hmm. So listen, if he can't, if they don't feel comfortable, then just backdate him, and we'll see him uh, game ten or whatever. Uh, why, why press it? Um, well, what would it be a 15 day? It's a or 10 day IL, 10 but it's backdated. So he'd be back, I guess. No, we, we'd see him. The opener see of the Dodger series. 
if they backdate it to to this Monday, yeah, yeah, you're right. The opener of the Dodgers, opener of the Dodgers that series. So yeah. That's six games out of 162. Of course, you want to see Hap lead off. Yeah, but if we do, if we can't till Game Seven, I'm I'm resigned to my fate there. Yeah, okay. I think I think you might be right on the on the DH thing. We'll see. I think if he plays back to back games, I bet you he DHs opening day. But then they could have a morale problem if he's not playing well over a third. Um, yeah, although Magical and Mastro both being on the roster, they can hopefully come in in the seven, eight, nine innings. Yeah, that's true. With if the lead, ready. at least with the yeah. lead. It's a good point. That's a good point. You'd like yeah. Morell's bat down, but we'll see. Yeah, it's just never a good sign when you have a soft tissue injury and you're not progressing. It's one of those things, you know, I always say on here, so-and-so isn't linear. One thing that is linear is a soft tissue injury. You're yeah. supposed to get better and better and better, and if you get worse, it's just a problem. Right, right. Or in, in, in counsel's words, he plateaued a bit. That's not good. It's not a great word choice. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on Magical making this team, what he provides out of the gate? Yeah. <laughs> I, Go Cubs. It's, it's great third base insurance for Morrell. It just right. feels like him and – it feels Is he like ready? If you're going to, it feels like if you're just going to have magical and master bony, you know, it's kind of, it's just that a was little kind of a surprise. Yeah. It's just kind of weird, but I love having magical on the team because I love using his bat late. If you need contact. Mm -hmm. And then like, for example, this sounds like one of the craziest things you'll ever hear. We can move on. And then you have Mastro pinch run for him when he gets on. If let's say, let's say it's opening night and we're in Texas and it's the eighth inning and it's, Second and third, one out. And Morell's due up. Morell's mm -hmm. going to get that A-B. I know he is. Right. But it, in my head, if they have a strikeout pitcher on the mound and all we need is a little bit of a ground ball, you could go magical ground ball through the drawn in infield and then replace him at third. Like It just gives you some flexibility. Right. Um, I wonder if Council would do that. Probably not. I think early in the year, Shoot. you got to give, give Morell the at-bat. Yeah. But um, there's other guys that that magical could pinch hit for late that that struggle in contact spots and mm -hmm. you know you know you use use him to your advantage like you said late in game so it's not it's not the worst thing in the world it's just like him and Ma uh, Master Boney are so similar um, Master Boney just has the the speed element. It's opening week for the Cubs. They're going to open, as we know, in Arlington against the Rangers. But news broke Sunday about where they're going to open. A uh, year from now, let's hear about that next. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug in to your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV shows, as well as free and live TV, whether it's opening weekend for baseball or March Madness, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. They also recently created Fire TV channels, which includes all of us at Locked On, and that lets you dive into the world of sports, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking. Check out the Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV, you should trust us on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. USA Today's Bob Nightingale reported Sunday that the Cubs and Dodgers have been told they will open the 2025 season in Tokyo, Japan. The Cubs will then return to the West Coast and open the season. Uh, excuse me. The Cubs will then return to spring training and then open the season on the West Coast. So a similar format and that the Cubs and Dodgers, a similar format as this year, that the Cubs and Dodgers will play two or three games in Japan before everybody else, uh, over a week before everybody else, come back, squeeze in a day or two of spring, and then be on the same schedule uh, with all the other teams. Nice that the Cubs are getting some international love. Uh, shout out to Pitbull. And uh, opening the season in Japan next year, right? I don't, I don't like it at all. Go um, Cubs. Gonna really throw throw off throw our a wrench in the, in the plans in our routine. I mean, we're gonna have an opening day at what is it gonna be four a.m. or something? And 
have, well, have to, absolutely at 5 a.m. And then we're going to hopefully, hopefully we'll, I mean, I'm already thinking 2025. Hopefully we split those two and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then come back and then we got spring and it's just kind of really weird. So, um, I don't appreciate that we've we've opened the year internationally twice in the last twenty five years, but we haven't had an all star game in, in, in thirty plus. Yeah, um, well, Manfred doesn't like the Cubs. I don't like that. It really throws off the routine of our players, and uh, we'll worry about that when we get there. When Juan Soto's hitting third in our lineup. Ooh, uh, live listener event at seven p.m. Central Tuesday. Send an email to. L-O-C sound off at gmail.com. L-O-C-S-O-U-N-D-O-F-F at gmail.com. We'll hit you back with the time slot. That's going to be a few minute increments there to get everybody on and uh, the link to where we record. So that's always been fun. We've, we've had the most listeners on our program. I believe that's a big reason why uh, the listener is the biggest reason why we're the number one Cubs show out there. And uh, part of what makes us unique is that we have listeners live on our own airwaves um, as we continue to uh, build here on the show. And we're locked in and locked on for another uh, year on the program. All right, Sam, let's have a great week. Off season is over. Let's do it, right? Let's do it, man. All right. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, smash the like button for the algorithm, and leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs. There is momentum happening here.